welcome to our review on loss of biodiversity. First thing we need to know then is what does biodiversity actually mean? And quite simply, it's the variety of living things that we find in an area. And the reason that biodiversity is important to us is because it's essential for maintaining this balanced ecosystem. And we as humans really rely on biodiversity to provide us with all the raw materials we need for life as we've become accustomed to it. Even though humans do need this biodiversity, unfortunately, we are also the leading cause of the loss of biodiversity. And the main reason behind that is down to the ever increasing human population. So we're going to look at a few key ways in which humans are now responsible for this loss of biodiversity. So if you're doing geography GCSE as well, there will be a nice little overlap here with your geography course. First and foremost, we have deforestation, which quite simply is the permanent removal of large areas of forest. And you can see an example of this on the right there. Now, the reason that we do this is because trees give us this material for building and for fuel. It also means that we're clearing these areas of forest that will then give us the space we need to build roads for new farms and agriculture or for building on. However, the impact of doing this means that we've reduced the number of trees. As soon as you reduce the number of trees, you potentially reduce the number of animals that are supported by those trees because they may use them for food or for shelter. So there's that knock on effect that we see. The second way that we're responsible for the loss of biodiversity is through agriculture. Now, obviously, the main reason behind this is with this ever increasing population of humans we've got, we need more food. So we use a range of intensive farming techniques in order to feed this growing population. So one of the things that we will do is we'll cut down the hedgerows that always used to line the fields, because that means we can then get bigger machines in there. We're maximizing the space we've got. However, the impact of that is that we've reduced the number of plant species present and we've reduced the places for things like hedgehogs to live. We also use a range of chemicals in our intensive farming techniques. First one being pesticides, which kill pests, as the name suggests. And that means that not only are we removing those pests that would have damaged the crop, but they could well have been food for a different organism. One other problem we can also see with certain pesticides is something called bioaccumulation which is where the pesticide builds up in the food chain and then it can kill off some of these larger organisms unintentionally, which was something we saw with a pesticide called DDT many years ago. Another type of chemical we use is called a herbicide, which kills weeds. And the whole idea behind that is it reduces the competition in the field, but it's going to reduce the number of plant species present. And as soon as we're reducing the plant species present, we're reducing the number of food supplies for different organisms as well. So we've got a range of ways in which our agriculture is going to lead to a loss of biodiversity. Next up, we've got hunting and fishing. So again, this is all down to the need to feed our growing population, or in the case of hunting, sometimes just for fun, because it's always great to go out and kill things in some people's minds. Obviously, the impact of this, if we think about fishing, first of all, you can see an example of the kind of fishing we're talking about in the right hand side at the top there. So we use these massive trawling nets. Now, as they're being dragged along, they're catching absolutely everything. So what we will see is that there's a risk to other marine life as well. Things like dolphins getting caught in those nets inadvertently. But we also see big problems with overfishing. So we've actually got areas now that are bereft of a certain species because we've basically fished them out of existence in that area. In terms of our hunting, then what we'll see is it could have impacts on our food chain. If we hunt one species in a larger number, then what we're going to find is that could mean that we've lost a key part of the food chain. So predators of that particular animal may well not have enough food. They could die off or the plants that those animals were eating no longer are being eaten in large quantities. So we then see that plant have a population explosion and it will help compete other organisms, which means they could then die off. So it's not just one organism affected, it's a wide number. The final factor we need to look at is pollution. The general pattern that we see here is that the more polluted an area actually is, the fewer organisms can actually survive there. And a really good example of this is the process of eutrophication. 
This occurs when farmers spray their field with fertilizers and those fertilizers then run off the fields into lakes and rivers. As a result of that, the lakes and rivers have got a lot more nitrate content, which means that the algae present then has an algal bloom. So basically they produce in large quantities. As a result of that, you end up with a picture like the one on the right there. The entire surface gets covered with that algae, which blocks any of the sunlight from getting down into the water. So the plants that are in the river or the lake end up dying. When things are dead, then the decomposers come in and those microorganisms, as they're carrying out the process of decomposition, are using oxygen from the water. So the oxygen levels in the water drop, which means the fish then are going to die. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now recall what biodiversity is and the different factors that are affecting biodiversity and what their impacts actually are.